keep calling, I ain't picking up. Through with conversation, done with games, now you know I'm giving up. I didn't have to be like this, but you made me. You got everybody around me out here thinking I'm crazy. Now our past changed our future, and that's breaking my heart. It's me. It's me. Simba TV. Bang. What is good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Simba coming back here again with another reaction video for you guys today. For today's reaction video, we got terrifying birth you haven't seen before. Now, if you're curious like me, I'm a curious person. Always wonder about things giving birth. Like, how are these things brought into this planet? You feel me? Always think about those type of stuff, man. And from the title, they about to show us some things we ain't never seen before. And I'm I'm all for it. Let's jump up in it. Their arms all over the place and crawling away is pretty terrifying. Once, starfish were spotted tearing off their arms, which then detached and crawled away from the body. Aw, oh, hell no. I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. Their arms are crawling away. Are those babies? Are those babies? Are the arms babies? Turned out this happens everywhere, from Alaska to Mexico, among at least 20 different starfish species. Sometimes one torn arm sort of eats the rest. What? Like a zombie. So what's this all about? Starfish are amazing creatures. Yes, many animals on our planet can regenerate, but starfish can restore their body from a tiny piece. As long as there's a fragment of the central disk intact, everything is fine. But some tropical starfish species have gone even further. They can grow an entirely new starfish from just one piece of a torn arm. Imagine a person's arm got chopped off in an accident. And a new person grows out of it. Ah, hell Perhaps no. It's a good thing that people don't work like that. The starfish can do that since each of its arms contains copies of vital organs and is equipped with eye spots that help starfish differentiate between. Bro, what? What? That's something new. That is something new. I never known that. Also, Patrick must have had a wild childhood. Let me just say that. Between light and darkness. Plus, even a small fragment of an arm has tube feet, which help the starfish move. Following injury or amputation, a starfish, or rather the piece that was left of it, can survive with copies of organs during the regeneration period until everything else grows back. That is, from a few months to more than a year. Though this ability doesn't explain why starfish throw their arms around like they don't need them anymore, what could be the reason for this behavior? Well, starfish could do it for asexual reproduction. Some species actually reproduce like this. You cast off your arm, your offspring grows out of it. Mission That's accomplished. Crazy. Since starfish got many arms and regeneration doesn't take much time, they can repeat this multiple times. True, it's important that the torn arm doesn't get eaten by a predator. This can happen sometimes. However, as I said, each arm of a starfish contains copies of all the important organs, including the gonads the organs that produce reproductive cells. Starfish actually reproduce by spawning. That is, these very reproductive cells end up in the water and are fertilized somewhere out there, outside the body. This gave birth to a theory saying that starfish cast off their arms to increase the scatter range of the eggs and get better chances of them being fertilized. And you know, it sounds quite logical. By the way, it's believed that starfish that reproduce asexually age more slowly and feel better than those that use conventional sexual reproduction, that is, without tearing off their arms. So perhaps by throwing their arms around, starfish simply prolong their lives. But since we mentioned typical sexual reproduction, I just have to show you what starfish larvae look like, because they don't look like their parents at all. This weird-looking blot is the future starfish. What? It not only looks like some kind of microorganism, but is also covered with cilia. Yeah, you probably remember from your school biology lessons that cilia help different single-celled creatures move. The larvae generate vortices of water around them, which helps them move and also bring nutrient microorganisms closer to their mouths. Baby starfish spend 60 days in the open ocean, feeding and building up strength to change into the next form. But back to the weird arm scattering by starfish. Another possible reason they do that is temperature regulation. And that's, okay, let's face it, 
tearing your arm off because you don't like the temperature around is totally weird. However, some starfish indeed do that. When dealing with an excessively warm environment, they could actually die, as starfish are considered cold-blooded animals. Really? There's an internal temperature limit for starfish, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's exceeded, the starfish dies. At the same time, the temperature of the central disc, that is the most important area, and its arms can differ by several degrees. This suggests that this is the way starfish dissipate heat, keeping it away from the vital area. Naturally, as soon as the temperature in the arms exceeds a dangerous mark, the arms shrink and detach. That, of course, doesn't feel nice, but it's much better than dying, especially since arms are easy to grow back. Well, some species of starfish can tear off their arms at the point where they connect to the central body in order to escape from predators. Perhaps this is the most natural and usual explanation. After all, this is what lizards do when they discard their tails. Better to lose a tail, or in this case an arm, than your life. However, the story that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video has nothing to do with reproduction, body temperature, or protection from predators. It's all about the virus. It was discovered quite recently, but judging by the museum specimens of starfish, the virus has been raging at least since the 1940s. The problem is that no one knows why it began to influence starfish like this now. Well, I'm not a scientist, but perhaps this is how starfish increase their chances of surviving the virus. Once infected, they may discard body parts hoping they'll grow and learn to better deal with the virus. Huh. True, it's still not clear why the torn arms are trying to devour each other. We have to wait for some serious research to find this out. Thankfully, so far, the strange virus doesn't pose a serious danger to starfish, and the situation is far from being catastrophic. The ability to regenerate may help, but it can also be a source of problems, just not for the starfish themselves. The crown of thorn starfish is an invasive species for coral reefs in the western Pacific. Like many other starfish species, it has advanced regeneration, and it also loves to eat shellfish. At some point, the crown of thorn starfish became so carried away they began to undermine the catch of local fishermen, and the fishermen didn't take that well. The clam fishers decided to fight the invasive species on their own, but they didn't know exactly what to do to kill the starfish. Their reasoning was simple. If you cut an animal in half, it definitely wouldn't survive. Ha! They threw parts of starfish into the water, and it just kept multiplying. That's crazy. It's like, ha ha, I got you. You thought you had me, but I win. Like, no, nah, bro, that's crazy. So how do you, how do you kill it? Like, jab a fork in the middle of the, in the center or something? I don't know. Not realizing they only increased the population of invasive species. In the end, there were so many starfish that this led to the overpopulation of coral reefs, and in some areas, it's still a serious issue. Wow. Fighting crown of thorn starfish is really difficult. In the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia alone, these starfish are causing damage that's estimated to be responsible for a 40% decline in coral cover. Wow. People just can't cope with it. And that's where technology comes to the rescue. Scientists at the Queensland University of Technology have developed an autonomous robot known as Totsbot. Armed with cameras, five thrusters, and GPS, this small submersible can find and kill crown of thorn starfish by using a pneumatic arm to administer a lethal injection. To identify the invasive starfish, the robot was trained on thousands of images and videos of the reef. Well, as for crown of thorn starfish which the robot misses, divers can deal with them later. And there are fewer starfish. But aside from regeneration, starfish have other superpowers that make them truly successful predators. Like a to be honest, when back in school I found out that starfish are basically predators, it shattered my world. Good what? thing no one told me about their ability to turn their own stomach inside out. What the f- Where are we going with this? I didn't know- I, Look, I did not know Patrick was built like this, bro. I did not know he was a thug. He a gangster. He can turn. He can turn his stomach inside out to eat other. My mind. My mind. My mind. My mind. What is happening, bro? I thought they were just these cute little freaking stars that just roamed and like 
ate little weeds and stuff. Nah, they they some gangsters. They really out here on the front line. Like, look, man, I'm really out here messing shit up. Okay, can't nobody kill me. I turn my stomach inside out and I'll split myself. Like, what? What? <laughs> To eat, this echinoderm actually ejects its stomach from its body, placing it on the digestible parts of its prey. Usually, these are mussels or clams, that is, something soft. The stomach then partially digests what it can, producing a slurry, and then is drawn back into the starfish's ten digestive glands. All that's left after a starfish dinner is an empty shell. And then the predator sets off in search of its next prey. Sometimes starfish don't even think too much about the size of what they eat, and they pick quite large prey like fish or crabs. That looks frightening. Yeah. And as if all this wasn't enough, the scientists hit a camera inside the mussel to see what it looks like to be eaten by a starfish from the inside. Well, I don't like it. That's creepy. Compared to this, the ability to see with arms seems to be quite harmless. The thing is, starfish don't have eyes in the usual sense, with pupils and all that. However, at the tip of each arm, they have light-sensitive spots, usually black or reddish. They allow starfish to recognize their environment to some degree. The researchers noted that starfish eyes resemble those of crabs and spiders and contain simple photoreceptors. That is, they don't provide an HD resolution, but they allow animals to stay closer to their homes. 200 pixels are enough to see at a distance of 3 feet and understand where to move, but anything further gets blurry. However, what? starfish clearly don't feel any discomfort. And what should they be afraid of when evolution gave starfish armor for protection? Of course, it's not as tough as the armor of a crab or a turtle, but just like with their eyes, this is good enough for them. Starfish have a hard covering on the outside made of calcium carbonate plates with tiny spines on the surface. Rigidity and the presence of spines depend on the starfish species. Such armor can protect starfish from birds, fish, and sea otters, given that predators aren't too persistent and don't turn their prey over. Though actually, what can birds and otters do against the animals that have learned to defend themselves from humans? The good news is that starfish won't bite you if it feels threatened. The bad news, starfish don't want to be studied. This was discovered by biology students who were tasked with implanting small chips into starfish to make them easier to identify for further research. But no one asked the animals if they agreed to be a part of it. A few days later, the students discovered that the starfish simply forced the tags out of their bodies without any harm to their bodies. The chips didn't what? damage the organs, didn't cause any pain, the starfish simply spat them out from their arms. Fortunately, scientists have a solution to this problem, but that's a story for another time. And finally, perhaps the saddest fact of today's video. I already mentioned that the truth about the starfish shattered my world once. Of course, this is an exaggeration, but there's one more thing that's actually frustrating. Patrick and SpongeBob would never be friends in the real world. On July 27, 2021, at a depth of 6,184 feet, Researchers took a photo featuring a yellow sea sponge resting next to a five-pointed starfish. The starfish was even pink. You may have seen this picture too, because it went viral on the internet pretty quickly, and maybe you even thought it was cute. Though the only good thing about it is the outward similarity. In real life, these creatures are far from being pals. This species of starfish has been observed to feed on sponges. Moreover, this is probably what happened shortly after the picture was taken. Yes, the sponge looks big, but as you already realized, the size of the prey never bothered the starfish. The size of the prey, poor eyesight, the need to turn the stomach inside out, it doesn't matter. Starfish just want to eat. See you later. That messed me up, man. That really messed me up. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.